Hi, welcome to Rural Spin's third installment to our little series on collecting your local wild yeast for your own uh, sourdough starter. It's been 24 hours since our last episode where we just mixed up flour and water and some air uh, and put it on the stove to start collecting our wild yeast. And I took a still photo of the bubbling that's starting to occur um, as the wild yeast in the area is starting to incorporate into our little mix here. Uh, it didn't show up so well on video camera, so um, in, a, in a few minutes you'll just see a still photo just so you can see what it looks like. And um, it, don't be surprised if there's not a ton of bubbles. You know, this, this process can take a while while you know, you're collecting wild yeast and they're kind of doing their thing and they're, they're working themselves up into a little collection here. <clears throat> uh, but what we want to do after 24 hours is incorporate more air because, of course, the air is where all the yeasts are. So I just have a fork here, <clears throat> and I'm just going to whip it you know, as much as I possibly can. Like I'm whipping egg whites or whipped cream. You just kind of want to make it so it's more bubbly and uh, just as much air as you possibly can incorporate into it. And then we'll just set it back on the stove and let it sit for about another 24 hours. And at the end of that time period, we'll start to see a lot more activity occurring. Keep in mind that it is winter that I'm doing this in, which is fine, but the process is going to take a little longer than if you did this in the summertime. And in the summertime, I would keep this bowl outside. I would have it covered with something that would allow air to... Uh, get through like a washcloth or a piece of muslin just to keep the critters out but you never want to cover it with saran wrap or a plate or anything like that you know you want to have air be able to actually get to your flour and water but i want to say something quickly since we have a little extra time today um that you can't just buy sourdough starter from another location and have it shipped to you and expect it to work like, San Francisco has wonderful wild yeast, which is why their sourdough is so fabulous. The rest of the country doesn't really have that. Um, the sourdough you have in your region could be excellent, there's no doubt about it. Um, but the San Francisco stuff just happens to be famous. But you can't ship it from there through mail order, have it delivered to your house, and expect to keep San Francisco sourdough alive. It's just not going to happen. What will happen eventually is the, basically the process that we're doing here which is the wild yeast in your region are going to start populating <clears throat> uh, the culture that you bought from San Francisco. And eventually they're going to overtake uh, the San Francisco yeast and you'll end up with a local sourdough starter that is populated with your, with your local yeasts. And they can uh, be different in all different regions in terms of how they behave. So you really have to get to be friends with your sourdough starter. And we'll talk about that in future episodes. But for now, we'll leave this sit for another 24 hours and take a look at the still photo so you can kind of see what it starts looking like.